So let's talk about the Power Apps button on Select Event. So when we add a button to our screen, we generally want it to do something when we click it. So with this particular one, if I just change the text, what I'm going to do with this button is I'm going to navigate to another screen. So we're just going to put go to screen on there. And if I now click the button, on the left hand side here we have a lot of properties for that button or events. Um, the one we want when we click it is going to be called on select. So that's the one we want to select if we want the button to do something. So I select on select and at the top here we can now put in what we want the button to do. So because I'm going to navigate I'm going to use a navigate command which is the command for moving to a different screen. So I'll select that, it opens a bracket and now I can select one of my screens. So if I select this one I also have an option to put in a kind of effect that happens. So I'm going to put in screen transition fade and now if I run that screen, click the button, as soon as I click this the on select event is getting fired and it takes me to that screen so that navigate command has worked it's taken me to this screen so now I've added another button and it's got a caption called set label and what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be adding a label and as soon as I click that button the label is going to have a particular value now in a programming language such as Visual Basic that's quite easy to do uh, we would put some code behind that button which said something like the name of the label equals whatever we wanted to go into that label so the name of the label equals John for example and then the label would become updated but in Power Apps it doesn't work like that it's a little bit different so if I look at the code behind the label we can see again I have to use the on select event and the code I'm using is update context. Now update context you use when you want to set a variable which can only be used on this screen. So you can't really use it in other parts of the application, it's just for this screen. And you open a curly bracket, and you open a squiggly bracket, and you give the variable a name. In this case I've called it name, but you can call it whatever you want. Then you put a colon, and then I put in quotes um, the value that I want to be passing through to the label. So the value I'm passing through is John. So now what I want to do is add a label. So I click here, insert label, and I could just pull it down below that button. So now in that label if I click on it and I come along here to the right hand side and I look at the properties under the advanced section what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting the text value of that label. So I click here, I'm going to remove what's already in there. And now I just need to put the name of my variable in there. Now we know I actually called it name. So here it is, name. And you can see it's already passed in John there anyway. So now if I run it, we can see John is there but I could probably change that to to be Paul. So let's run it again now. So as soon as I click this button the on select event fires and we can see now the value in the label is Paul. So here's another thing we can do with the on select event of the button. 
Um, this time I'm going to select the or set the text to be a different color on the button um, as soon as it's clicked. So the way we do that is if I click on the button again I've set a variable here um, using update context uh, the variable is called toggle value and basically I'm saying um, when you use this uh, exclamation mark that is um, the not it means not so if it's not true then it's going to be false if it's false then it's going to be true so as soon as the button's clicked it's going to reverse what it's it currently is the value cur currently is so then on the right hand side of the properties of the button under the color property I've got an if statement so I'm saying if the toggle value is yellow then make the button red so it's going to do the reverse of whatever it currently is. So let's try that out. So we click the button and the color is now red. Click it again and it becomes yellow. So we're using the on select event of the button to set a value, a variable, which is either going to be true or false. Um, and then depending on that value, it's going to show whatever color you've selected here. So we can do the same thing with a label. Here I've added a label as a heading and in the properties here we want the fill property. So that's going to fill the background color and I've just used the same thing here. If toggle value is true, put color equals yellow, otherwise put red. So if we run it again, you can see it's switching between the colors on the on select event of the button. So this time I'm gonna make a control visible or invisible. So this time I've got a button caption is called show and I'm still using the update context toggle variable of true or false so now I'm going to add a gallery we'll just move that down slightly and we want to select the data source so let's select one there that's filled in now we're now going to look for the visible property of the gallery here it is it's currently saying true but we want to put the condition in um, to check if our variable is true or false and if it's true then visible is going to show the gallery otherwise it's not going to show it if the variable is false so we want to put in a condition here saying if toggle value true otherwise false so what we're saying is if the toggle value is true then the visible property is going to be true otherwise it's going to be false so if we run it now click the show button we can see it's not there it's invisible click it again and it comes back because our on select event of the button is setting our variable to true or false and the visible property has that condition in saying if the variable is true then the visible property is true otherwise it's going to be false if you like this video please click the button to like it or why not subscribe to my channel or you can even download my free Power Apps for Newbies book at www.powerappsfornewbies.com.